creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living Today. We're going to learn how to cook with store-bought wonton wrappers and learn the tips and techniques for making a quilt in 90 minutes. Can you believe it? One of my guests today is John Valerickson, or more commonly known as Chef Johnny V. He's not only a chef, he also owns and operates a cooking school in Santa Fe, New Mexico. John's going to demonstrate how to use store-bought wonton wrappers to make salmon dumplings, as well as a delicious and easy to make dessert. We'll start the show today with Meryl Ann Butler, and she's an author, designer, and quilter. She's developed a very unique technique, and she'll show step-by-step -step instructions for making what she calls a 90-minute quilt. And the secret to this technique is that the piecing and quilting is done at the same time. Her business is 90-Minute Quilts, and she lives in Norfolk, Virginia. Marilyn, I've so looked forward to you coming because your concept of a 90-minute quilt gives me hope that maybe I could learn to quilt. Why did you write these books? Well, I like to do more fancier stuff uh, like, like this. Like yeah. uh -huh. and, uh, and But I have grandchildren and I have community service projects and I need to do something fast for that. One of my pieces is called Jewels of India and that's one of my fancier pieces that obviously takes more than 90 minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's got um, a, over a thousand pieces in it, um, 1,500 rhinestones, and the cape shows the Taj Mahal on the back, mm -hmm. and underneath the garment shows um, the front has flames with uh, candles with flames, and the back shows the goddess Lakshmi mm -hmm. from India. Things that we've always called wearable art. That's right, wearable they, art, they and are I beautiful. love to do that. And but and. I love my grandbabies and I want to do something for them, quilts. but I, I want to get it done and uh, g before they go to college. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is an example yes. of a, it's hard to believe, 90 minute quilt. The, my best time's 83 minutes, actually. Mm -hmm. And I can piece, quilt, and bind this in 83 minutes. That does include shopping for fabric. And then that's after you've done a few. <laughs> that's right. Okay. This and is, then this is how it's this laid This is how out. we start. This is the uh, Gems of the Sea Fabric by Janet Broxson for PNB. And the first thing you'll do is cut out your squares and lay them out mm -hmm. and one of the things that I do is I like to get something special in the center so this oh, center you can see your highlight yeah the mm -hmm. little um, turtle. turtle so the way I do that is I you create a little mask and I put that on the fabric to see what would mm -hmm. be a good shape and you can kind of move it around and see if that's you want right. this angle or right. that angle and then once I get it the way I want it I'll take the chalk uh -huh. and draw a chalk line around it and then take this off and then I can use the uh, square use your rotary yeah, cutter and my, uh -huh. and my rotary cutter. I like to use this ergonomic one too. That's so important. That's Especially a, if you do a lot of quilting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The more cutting, cutting you do, the more you need that. So the next thing you'll do is stitch these together into columns. That's mm -hmm. the main trick with the 90 minute quilt. And these are the columns and I label them. This is column one. So this would be here. Mm -hmm. And then we have and it's what a quarter inch seam. Yes, in quilting we always use a quarter, a quarter inch seam. We do. Uh -huh. And column two and column. Th That's this, smart. To this is column mark three. Them like yeah. That. Uh huh. And then, in order to make the quilt, once we do the columns, we don't sew the whole quilt top together. We take oh. column three, and we actually will layer our backing onto our batting. And and here we're this using is the backing. Uh, yep. Here's the flannel. We always use flannel. Oh, okay. It feels good and it's easy to stitch. And then this quilt has uh, warm and natural batting in it. And that's what cotton. you like to use. I uh -huh. do. And then we take the third column, which is already pinned here, but you'll put it on here and measure from the sides. It's very important to measure the first one. Now, is this batting the exact size of the no, quilt? No, okay. it's not. The batting and the backing are cut a little large. Just larger. But okay. we do want to make sure that this is parallel to the mm -hmm. edge. So we'll measure the distance from here to here and from here to here uh -huh. to make sure. And that's why you put a pin in each That's one of these. right. Hold that's it right. exact. And uh -huh. the next step is to take column two, and we're going to put it right on top of column three like this. Mm -hmm. And then you stitch up here. Quarter so when you inch. flip, mm -hmm. right? When you flip this over, not only have you stitched the two columns together, but you've also stitched through here. Oh, I've so, never seen that done. Well, that's, that's part why of the 90-minute quilt. quilt technique. Yes. And so, 
this is what it looks like after you get columns two and columns four stitched on here. Yeah, and you can see on the back, okay. the stitching goes through. No wonder so, you're saving so much time. That's right. You're, you're piecing and, and quilting, quilting at, at the, the same, same time. time. And then after you have two and, and four on this, this, and this is the standard baby quilt, then, of course, we'd put number one and five. Uh-huh. Same thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You have four seams, and you've quilted your you project. you quilt. <laughs> that's amazing. And you can leave it at that if you want. Uh-huh. But... What I usually do, and you can still do this in the 90 minutes, is I will do uh, X stitching. And I start in one corner, and I just go down to where I stop, and then bing, 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 around like this. Now, do you mark it, or have no, you, you done it what? so often you can just Most eyeball it? Most people can eyeball it. It's, all, it's pretty quick. It's just, it's marked, really, by the corners well, here. Well, that's true. So you yeah. only have to stitch this little five-inch piece in the middle, and most uh -huh. people can do that. I use an even a feed foot or a walking foot. Oh, okay. And that makes it much, makes it easier. much easier. So that's quilted. Let's and see what that looks like. Yeah, little oh X's my gosh, on the you're back. Just, you're just almost through. Yes. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't believe how quick. Yes. Uh -huh. So then the next part is, um, let's You want to leave this Yeah, one? we're okay. going to take a look at this quilt shows the four steps of making the backing. Oh. And this top part is kind of the loose extra backing mm -hmm. and batting that we start with. Then, this side over here shows what happens after we've taken the ruler here and cut, cut this off. So we cut the backing and the batting mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. distance there. And you notice I have these little lines on my ruler. This is glow line tape, and it oh. sticks on there so that you can make sure which line That's you're using. That's a great idea. And it, yeah, it's like a... Um, Post-it note, so it comes mm -hmm. off comes real off. easily. So that's the second step. So on this part, you cut the, this side. The uh -huh. backing and the batting are both three and a half inches. Three and a half. Then, this is the trick with 90-minute quilts. You'll take, you take this flannel and you fold it back, so you can cut a one and a quarter inch. Here. Oh, so we want to cut this one and we a quarter. We cut this just, shorter and uh -huh. we fold this back. And so one, we don't cut it. Yeah, one of the reasons why flannel's good is it'll stay stuck there. Uh -huh. so yeah, you it sticks to itself. Right. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice you have the flannel backing larger than this. And mm -hmm. then you'll press underneath a quarter of an inch. That's pressed. And then you just fold this over, cover your raw edge, oh. and stitch up there. Well, if that isn't easy. <laughs> That's a very easy binding. I call it's, it a self-binding. Uh -huh. It's also nice because the place where kids feel the quilt the most uh -huh. is the, the edge, edge, and that's right. all nice and flat, flannel. Uh -huh. What I use is, um, whoops, these are, these are the threads that I used for this. I used a gradated thread because you can see the back is not a uh -huh. solid color. And when mm -hmm. you pick out flannel for this project, you want something that's got an overall design, nothing like stripes or oh, geometric, okay. because so. you're going to see it vertically mm -hmm. this way and mm -hmm. horizontally this way. And the way it blends with all these other I beautiful know. colors. Isn't it great? Uh -huh. And this is so sulky um, blendables thread. Uh -huh. So I use this green color on the underneath in the bobbin. And then this is, I think, called springtime, and it's got yellow and blue and uh -huh. green. So you use that in the top. You know, oh. why not? I mean, it doesn't take any more work. No? use a variegated color, but when it's finished, it looks like you did more work, and <laughs> that's does. what I like. This is an amazing thing. Nancy Zeman invented this. Um, th this is a locking seam gauge, oh. so you can measure the width. That's one thing you do want to do, mm -hmm. is measure the width of this all the way down. And I don't know about you, but how many times have I used a seam gauge where it moved and I, I got the wrong measurement? I know it got mixed up. I have, too. Finally, I taped mine down. <laughs> I do that, and too. And I'm like, well... It took Nancy's genius to figure this out. And so it locks so it'll stay uh -huh. exactly the right distance. That's great. So uh, Tools are very important to doing a good job of any they project. They are. Mm -hmm. And I bless Nancy every time I use this. Yeah. So we, I have a couple of other quick quilts to show. One is mm -hmm. called Serengeti Rainbows. Okay. And that is from my new book, More 90-Minute Quilts. And uh -huh. it shows how to make a quilt with just two fabrics. They're pretty exciting fabrics. So it looks like you did more work than you really did. Oh, uh -huh. But that shows two. And that's actually on page 48 okay. of um, More 90-Minute Quilts. Then there's Give Them Something to Talk About, which is a conversation charm quilt. And that has 35 different fabrics. There's 35 uh -huh. squares. Uh -huh. and so each so, one's a different fabric. Yeah, and so each one is a different 
something to have a conversation uh -huh. about. And I got those from Keepsake Quilting because they have a pack of kids six inch squares pre-cut. Already cut. Yes. That would There's save a lot of time. 60 of them uh -huh. in there so I picked out 35 that I liked mm -hmm. and that makes a great um, a great kids quilt. And of course anybody can use their leftover fabrics too for and that. And that's what quilting's really good that's for. That's right. Uh -huh. Then there's Call of the Wild, which is a wonderful lap quilt with flannel uh, squares in animal prints. And then the backing is minky. And mm. there's no batting in that one. You don't always have to put batting. Oh, you that's, don't? That's a traditional quilt is the, the top, the three layers, the top, uh -huh. the bat, right. batting, and the backing. But in Call of the Wild, I, since I use that minky, which is... Um, Benner Texas Microfiber Plush. Uh -huh. It's thicker. It's thick. Mm -hmm. So when I quilted it, it looked puffy and it worked uh -huh. great. Everybody loves that one. Uh -huh. and, that's, and I love the pillow that goes with that. Oh, yeah. It was quick and easy. And all of these make great community service projects. And then I have one here. This is from the first book. This is called My Dolly's Quilt. Oh, now this that is, would be a great thing for me to start with. Well, it is. It's, it's quick and it's easy, and then you learn just as much about the technique with uh -huh. this well, yeah. as you do with a larger quilt. Mm -hmm. And when you do a doll quilt, though, you want to put a, a thin batting in it so it doesn't, like, stick out straight oh, on the doll. Because it's so small. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it a wants good, to good drape point. a little bit. Uh -huh. And this is that flannel. It very is. Soft. And this is on uh, page uh, 110 of the first book, 90 Minute Quilts, and it's, um, yeah, it's quick mm -hmm. and easy. And it's a game, too. Oh. There's two oh, of every one. I remember one. reading and, about yes, that. And so they if, can match. If you're at church or someplace where the kids need to be quiet, they can match. <laughs> they can count the stars. That's a great idea, too. And the Good last, educational activity. Thank you. Yeah, and the last one is a Sean. This, believe it or not, is also a 90 Minute Quilt. Oh. This well, one I can see the technique now. It takes a little longer than 90 minutes because it's larger. And this one doesn't have the X. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. it's but it just has quilted. silk dupioni mm -hmm. on the back. You can try it on. That's you try beautiful. It. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can, yeah. Yeah. So um, this is in, it's called Silk Sophistication. Mm -hmm. And it's in my first book, 90 Minute Quilts. It's on page, um, oh, I don't have, the, but it's in the back of the book. Okay. It's an advanced project because it's larger. Uh-huh. But well, I surely do appreciate you being here and showing well, us. You. I never thought it would have been possible to make a quilt in 90 minutes, but it well, is. You can. Thank you. Thank you. John, it's always so nice when you come. I learn so many new things. And when you said we were going to do a segment on wontons, I thought, thank goodness. I eat them, but I've never prepared anything with them. You know, Cheryl, I love coming to see you. And uh, one of my classes in my cooking school in Santa Fe, I call Wonders with Wontons. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about wonton wrappers, as they're called, is they're inexpensive. You can find these everywhere now, which is which is nice. They used uh -huh. to have to go to a specialty store. This is how they would So come. they come in little packets. These are the smaller ones. So uh -huh. these are the square ones. And then there's bigger ones which are used more for egg rolls and stuff. But these are great. They're very versatile. They uh, can be used for ravioli. Today we're going to make a dessert with them and we're also going to make some steamed dumplings with them. Oh. And I think this is about $2.50 for about 60 of these. And where do we find these? What section of the store? So actually they're, they are refrigerated. So they're in the produce section, normally right next to the tofu. So they are right oh. with the Asian ingredients. Oh, okay. I'll so know where to look for them yeah, now. <laughs> they're, and they're, yeah, because you and I want to look for them in the, in the grocery aisle. Uh -huh. So first I'm going to make a simple lemon curd. Mm. So lemon curd is a great dessert to have on hand. You can even serve them with scones and biscuits. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to whisk together three eggs, some lemon juice. And this was fresh lemon juice. Fresh lemon mm -hmm. juice and lemon zest of three lemons. So the great thing about um, uh, mm -hmm. zesting now, in the old days it was a little tricky to do, but this is a new modern zester. Remember the zest is just the yellow part. You don't mm -hmm. want to get down beyond the yellow part. That's kind so, of bitter, that white yeah, is bitter. Yeah, that white part's called the pith and that's a little bit bitter. So as soon as you start to see the white, we stop, stop. Uh -huh. okay? And all I'm gonna do is start to whisk this over some simmering water. Mm -hmm. And eventually it's gonna start to thicken. I'm gonna add a cup of sugar as well. It's a little bit like making hollandaise sauce, if you will, except it is a, a sweet, a dessert. sweet, uh, sweet. dessert. Uh -huh. yeah. 
So I'm gonna let that simmer and get warmed up and it will start to thicken just like like a mayonnaise or like a hollandaise. While you're stirring that, I wanted to show, and, and you might yeah. can go ahead, because this is the coolest thing for getting, I mean, I've always used the kind yeah, where you the old reamers are and, so hard, uh -huh. but that's that's much more Cut your lime in, your lemon or lime, yep. whichever you're making. And normally you'd think about putting it like in, like this is yeah. what I thought. But you actually turn it upside down, so to speak. And then, and then, then this presses right all of the out. juice out. It's and just so And you get so every fast. single bit of uh -huh. that juice. So Every it's drop. So I'm going to let this warm up a, a little bit while I, while I okay. talk about our wontons. This, once it reaches sort of a simmer, it's going to thicken right away. It goes really fast. Really so you hardly want to take your eye off of it. Yeah, so that's okay. okay. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to make little wonton uh, crisps, if you will. And by, that's what these are. That's, that's what the these size, are. About and what I did inches. is I took a cookie sheet and I just simply separated my wontons on the cookie sheet. Looks like cheese slices is actually <laughs> what it looks like, except they're thinner. White. Yeah, and you want to make sure you only get a, a single one, a little bit stuck together yeah, there. Yeah, there we go. Fingernails help on this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Now these last in the refrigerator. You can freeze them before you use them. So if you, if you do get a couple packages and you have a few left over, Maybe go ahead that. and hang, do those last two. Okay. Then I'm going to use just a, uh, a simple, plain, unflavored vegetable spray. You don't want to use the garlic no. spray. No, <laughs> not okay. on the dessert. Just a light oh. coating on one side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're going to take another cookie sheet that is roughly the same size, set it right on top. Oh. And these get baked at 400 for about 12 minutes. That keeps them flat, keeps doesn't them it? Flat That's so a great idea. So they don't curl like up. Like sopapillas, when you're cooking them, they, yeah, they, they change curl. shapes. Uh -huh. And then that's okay, what they look so like. So you want those to just be that, <coughs> that brown, mm -hmm. okay? Just mostly on the edges. It's just lightly, yeah, lightly just browned lightly. all around. Huh. Then what we're going to do, we'll finish this. I'll let this go ahead and finish thickening. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to whip uh, some whipped cream into that, which we have in the fridge and then assemble little Napoleons okay. using that, okay? Napoleons. So we can pull that out, yeah, and then we'll... You want the bag? Actually, just the bowl, I think, Cheryl, okay. perfect. Mm. So we'll let this thicken, and then we'll go ahead and we can just finish that, okay. that step, maybe set that to the side. Okay, then for our dumplings, which we're going to steam... In the same wonton in wrappers. In the same wonton wrappers, we're gonna uh -huh. use kind of a cookie or biscuit cutter Mm -hmm. And we're going to cut a couple of these just into rounds, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to make a salmon and shrimp uh, mm. filling. Yum. That's almost like a pate, really, if you will. That I'm going to use. Because you're going to use the food processor. Yeah, and we'll use mm -hmm. the food processor for that. Get those ready. So is it going to take two per? No, actually just one. Just I'll one. show you. We'll... We're going to kind of crimp them up. Okay. Okay, so we've got some fresh salmon. Mm. And you can use any type of salmon. It can be any of the different varieties available. And I've chopped that up a little bit. So that it's a little bit easier. That just speeds up the process. Yeah, a little easier. These are just plain peeled shrimp. Mm -hmm. No tails. We don't want the tails in our little, our little dumplings. And then we've got fish sauce. Have you cooked with mm -hmm. fish sauce? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a popular Asian yeah. ingredient made from very small fish that oh. are dried. We've got white pepper, just so it doesn't look like sand in our dumplings. A little <laughs> bit of salt, some chopped scallions, and then just a little egg here. I'm just going to give this another little whisk. <laughs> you need one more hand for this recipe. <laughs> Doing two or three Here's of these at the once, don't you? Here. Yeah. Then we're going to add an egg. That's going to sort of be our binder here. Mm -hmm. And then I like to say that we're going to pulse this. We don't want to turn it into, I always tell our students, don't turn it into cat food. It shouldn't <laughs> look like your, your cat's breakfast, okay? So if you just pulse this, you're going to leave a little texture in it rather than making it completely smooth, okay? So that's good. We've got a little bit of texture. I can mm -hmm. still see some of those shrimp. Mm -hmm. Then to make the dumplings, I'm going to take a good spoonful of this Spread it, I always tell students, spread it about as thick as you would put peanut butter on your sandwich. Oh, okay. okay? And then we're gonna crimp this up, almost like a little money bag, if you will. Yes, that's what and it's it supposed to look like. And it kind of sticks together, <laughs> right? 
And then so it these, will stay stuck when you're steaming yeah, it? Yeah, it'll stay stuck when it stay stuck when you're steaming. Steaming. That was hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> and then rather than, this is just a simple bamboo steamer, I have it over a wok because a wok is nice and deep and actually fits uh, my steamer in there, you know, nicely. Perfect size. I've got my water uh, boiling and I'm just going to pop my little dumplings. My now you're putting dumpling. them in cabbage leaves. And those are in cabbage That's... leaves. And the reason for that is if your little dumpling is in, uh, touches the bamboo, oh. as it cooks and softens, it could stick. I so see. So by doing it in the banana, or in the uh, cabbage leaf, I see. it prevents it from uh, sticking to the bamboo. Now these are gonna steam covered for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. okay? And then really the only sauce you need is really a little drizzle of soy sauce and they're really oh. ready ready to go. So I've got that steaming. We're so going to do that steam. for 10 minutes. My little lemon curd is just starting to thicken. And then to finish this, what we're going to do, this might take a couple more minutes, but what I'll do, I'm going to fold a little bit of my curd into the whipped cream mm -hmm. and then we'll assemble our, um, our dessert and so we'll clear our little... And these are healthy, you know, healthy. They're not fried. It's not uh -huh. puff pastry that's going to be, you know, high in um, calories. too high mm -hmm. in calories. And that'll thicken. So I'm just going to speed this up for the magic of television. Okay. Besides, we're gonna, all ready to eat. So. Yeah, we're all getting hungry. <laughs> I'm just going to take some of the curd. Now, this is still a little bit warm and not quite as thick as it will normally be, but we'll give ourselves that wonderful flavor. Mm. And then it's we're going whipped to... Cream, really. Mm -hmm. So that's just plain whipped cream. Now, some lemon curd recipes have you fold in butter, oh. but because we're whipping in the cream, we're going to skip that last step. And then to assemble, we're going to put down one of our wrappers, mm -hmm. okay? This is just powdered sugar, just makes everything a little, a little prettier, uh -huh. okay? And then a nice spoonful of our, whew, of our curd with whipped cream. What an do. easy and, and very impressive yeah, dessert. Your, your guests sh will be uh -huh. like, wow, did you uh -huh. go to the bakery? Or did you have a chef come in yeah, and do it? Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I, that would be a good, that might be a good side career, right? It might. So I just do two layers is all you really need. How do they eat it? With fork or with um, my hand? You almost have to pick it up. The, the, the um, wontons are a little bit crisp. Uh-huh. So, you know, you can tell people, encourage your guests to go ahead and Enjoy Pick it, it up sure. and enjoy, uh -huh. and then a little bit of powdered sugar. Wow. So I always say powdered sugar was created so that restaurants can uh, charge an extra dollar for dessert <laughs> because it looks so pretty. It does. And see how simple uh -huh. that was. And then we can just pick those up and share those. And that I think is beautiful. ready to serve. And okay. we'll just quickly look at our dumplings. These will be about 10 minutes. You can see okay. they're already starting to get nice and... You'll be able to tell that they're cooked through, and then we'll serve those after 10 minutes and just serve them warm. Okay, easy enough to do, and I think it'll be fun to try the wontons because I'm sure I'm not the only one who, I think we who ate them and thought, oh, well, it'd probably be a lot of work to cook yeah. them. Yeah, so and just when you're uh, finished with these, wrap them tightly so they don't dry, dry out, out, but then you'll be... And then um, we can freeze them, like you yeah, said. Yeah, freeze or well, keep them Well, this has fridge. certainly been interesting, and what a, what a unique, uh, totally different way with the dessert as well as an entree to And then another, the another thing you can do is also make these into ravioli uh -huh. by just putting your filling for your pasta... And roll you it. wet them uh -huh. and just quarter them, and then those get actually boiled. So uh -huh. there's three different ways to cook them. Well, thank you so much. This has really been interesting. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how a pet's diet can impact their health. We'll show you how to plan a figtastic dessert party and talk about ways to incorporate leftover turkey and some of your recipes for entertaining. Pet owners know that a sick pet can cost a lot of money. One of my next guests knows that a pet's diet can impact their health, and he'll talk about ways that the diet can be improved. Another guest represents the California Fig Advisory Board, and she'll talk about combining fresh fruit and figs for a popular dessert item, as well as share some of her favorite ways to incorporate figs into other dessert recipes. And finally, we'll demonstrate some recipes using turkey that can add a new twist to traditional holiday entertaining or for any time you want to spice up your meal time.
All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6800 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information. And it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at KENW.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on the booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We'd also like to invite you to sign up for our free e newsletter. Just go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. Thank you.